A new study raises the possibility that the same kind of oxygen chambers used to treat divers for the bends could be effective in treating a debilitating disease. At three and a half, Rebecca is full of thoughts, but they're mostly her secrets. Because she has cerebral palsy, a brain disorder that makes speaking and moving difficult, if not impossible for her. As you see, in a lot of cases, she'll probably be in a wheelchair. She'll probably be dependent on us for the, for the rest of her life. Um, at school-wise, you know, and you have dreams for your child, but in this case, we felt that maybe it was going to be hopeless. That's the way Chantel used to think, but not anymore. She and a growing number of parents with children like Rebecca are turning to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Sump was originally developed in the 30s to help divers recover from decompression sickness. It would be the same as diving in the ocean at 25 feet while breathing, not compressed air as scuba divers use, but breathing pure oxygen. They're getting 15 times more oxygen. Their body's absorbing it. So under pressure, your body can absorb the gases a lot more readily. The theory is that the treatments help the damaged parts of the brain to heal, improving the children's cognitive abilities and reducing the spasticity or tightness in their muscles. Each treatment lasts about an hour. Some have been in here over 50 times. What does everyone do to entertain the children? <laughs> oh, well, I sing most of the time. I entertain them all. Some of the times they take naps, too. They're very comfortable, so you can take naps. And it's kind of nice that the parents get us to see us to be able to talk. <laughs> oh, yes, we've traded all kinds of ideas in yeah, here. Exactly, and exactly. So it's kind of a socializing thing, too. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay, switching over two on now. This massive chamber, bought from the U.S. Navy by a Coquitlam company, is so popular, there's a nine-month waiting list to use it. But does it really help? Today, results from the first clinical study on the subject, conducted by McGill University in Montreal, were released. The results are promising. Uh, it's just a pilot study, a sample of 25 children. There's a long ways yet to go. I never believed that Rebecca would go so far as she has now. And now I have hope that she's going to be able to go even further. Like how much does this mean to a mother? <laughs> Well, it means the world because as a mother, you feel you feel guilty about what's happening to your child, and you really you want to do everything for them. Now I'm seeing so much progress in so li in little time that oh, <laughs> I can't tell you how how much it is. It's just seeing your child progressing. We're seeing so much more. We're happy. Mm. <laughs> We're so pleased. Hey, Shrek. We're so happy. Plans are already underway at three major Canadian universities, including UBC, to conduct a full-scale clinical trial to determine the effectiveness of hyperbaric oxygen for children with cerebral palsy.